trading is about knowing the field. Foreseeing the opportunity. Executing at the right moment. Timing is everything. Hello Dream Team and welcome to another episode of The Good, The Bad and The Rugby in partnership with City Index, the leading provider of spread betting, CFD and FX trading. We are back together for Wheels on a Car. Hask and Tins are back from their mid-season breaks. You've been moisturising quite a lot, the tan's holding up. Yeah, a bit, bit, bit peely. A bit peely. I was a typical English man on, on holiday, day one, disintegrated myself, had two days, I even got to the sea in a t-shirt. <laughs> two days out the that, way. That's nuclear zombie. That was bad. That, I, yeah. I did see on one of your posts, I was like, ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, but, but, and I was, you know what, after that put on Factor 50, I still developed a reasonably deep sound. Welcome to our Rhino Bambino, Ellis Genge. Back from France at 2am last night. No, 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 we got back earlier than that. Um, I just got home at about two. Oh, okay. Yeah. I saw uh, Super Kev this morning, actually. Did you? He was away earlier, yeah. I was up in Salford. He's obviously, um, the, the legend just keeps growing. He's now bringing the Rob Burroughs Marathon to, uh, to Leeds, starting and finishing Henley. Uh, they haven't had a marathon in Leeds for 22 years. It's now going to be the Rob Burroughs Marathon and Super Cave's behind it. That's Unbelievable. Close. If if the man doesn't get any better. <laughs> Is he running in it? He ran he a marathon w- last week. He, he just for runs it for fun now. Yeah. What's Super Kev like? I, I know he's that. I know who obviously is. This is Super Kevin hero. Sinfield for the. Uh, no, no, yeah. Sorry, no, no, sorry. Just for our Super listeners. Sinfield. Um, yeah, legend. Um, obviously, off the pitch, he's. He's a bit quiet. Uh, he's not like uh, loud, doesn't shout much for your typical defence coach who's usually quite abrasive. Um, but he's one of those who holds quite a lot of weight um, for what he's done uh, in rugby and obviously the charity work and stuff. But is he, so it's one of those um, defence coaches that doesn't say about smashing everyone and you look at him and go, you've never smashed anyone. <laughs> no, because um, he, 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 he did. His he nose is pointing an east, mate. No, what I mean is, <laughs> He he, he used to hit people. He was an absolute machine. What I mean is, most of the archetypal yeah, defense coaches go, "You you know you need to beat him up." And you're like, "Sorry, what, what are you yeah. going to do? You couldn't damage a salad." Relax. You know, what what are you trying to say words. about Phil Larder? <laughs> is any one of them? Is any... Do you know why uh, my son is the best defensive player in the world? I coached him. <laughs> that came out the other day, didn't it? Yeah. That does he ever? Does he ever t- join in? Yeah. Super yeah. Care? Um, Has he still got a bit? Not like. He sometimes stands up for a receiver and plays like uh, if we do like drills, like off ten and stuff. But only if I don't know forty or someone's not not available. But no, he's still got it. He's does, still got it. Does Borthers ever come tr- trundling into? Well, the yeah, <laughs> we had some second rows. I can't remember what's happened. Someone was doing their laces or something, and Borthers was behind me this week. And I went, Steve, come on. And he gave me the look as if to say, like, seriously. I was like, yeah, come on. And he had his moldies on. He's like, I'm in molds. I was like, that's fine. <laughs> But you seen? Have you seen him pat down when he used to be in camp and he used to coach us? No, no. He's pat down beyond me once before. And yeah, yeah, he was brilliant, brilliant. And, but the thing is, it'd be better than Charlie yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, he stayed, he stayed on the field to start with. Yeah. Yeah. There's a cardinal sin where some of my boarders wearing moulds. I mean, I spent every scrummaging session in moulded boots, and I used to purposely do it just to piss you off. <laughs> You're not taking scrum seriously. You're not even wearing studs. Shut up. <laughs> don't, don't push anyway. Studs or not, you might as well put rollerblades on. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing if you just doing that at the back. Yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> the whole time. Just moonwalking on yeah. <laughs> For the uninitiated, and I, this isn't in the script, how big a difference is it wearing metal studs or moulded studs? Huge. Oh, huge. On certain surfaces, yeah, huge. I mean, genuinely, on a, like on a, on a Penny Hill Park, m- you know, minutely manicured training surface, it doesn't really matter. That's why I just couldn't be bothered to ever wear them. And I would say that once a week, there were, if a scrum went down, there'd be a huge row. Props would get up and go, you know, this is, you're not, you don't understand how important this is. You're not even fucking taking it seriously. You're wearing moulds. And I'd just be like, oh, God. You know, and then and they go, you're going to take more seriously? Like, yeah, promise you next week, whatever. Moulds on again. But then some of these lads are wearing like 20, <laughs> what, what inch are they? 21. 
21 inch studs. No, 21 mils. 21 <clears> mils. <throat> 21, 21 inch. inch. <laughs> right. Well, you're not that dedicated. That's sort of like wearing 21 inch fucking studs. You know. 21 mil studs. Very Alan Partridge. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> they're like mountain... Would you like me to dance for you? <laughs> they're like mountain crampons. You know, mountaineering crampons. They're like so big and they look so painful. And on these new modern crappy boots that like fold up with absolutely no support. Mm. After a while, you see like just two 21 mil studs <laughs> poking out the side of a, bo- a boot boat. Boots no, that's are all true, yeah, that's true. That horrific. Happens, uh... And they all look like, they all, they all literally look like they've got <clears> stones <throat> in their shoes. They're running around like, ah, ah, but they're really good at scrummaging at the time that nobody cares about. For the 10 yeah. scrums in the 80 yeah. minutes. Uh... And you probably don't even want to wear them, do you? Because you got you like a bit no, of dynamic if, footwork. Yeah, well, if I could wear lesser studs and scrum well, I would, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't think you can. If you haven't got your tickets for our tour yet, this is the quality context <laughs> that you can pay additional pennies to come and listen to. Um, I've got lots to talk to you about, actually. But very quickly, by the time this comes out, there will be nine days until our first show. Yes. Are we ready? Yes, we are. Are we? Well, are we not? I was very excited about the tour. Um, yeah, I ca- cannot wait. 16 dates, starting in Sheffield. Um, an, an opportunity to meet all the incredible fans um, that we have built up over the last kind of two seasons who have never met you, most of us. You don't like our fans. No, I know, but I'll be on a stage and they won't have access to me. Do You'll be I mean? talking down to them, so yeah, yeah. they'll be very happy. My favourite thing, there'll be a velvet rope and security guards. They can't get near me, but I'll be able to impart some knowledge. We've got some stories, we've got some amazing guests, we've got some incredible interactions to have, and we've done about 80% of the tickets as well, which is unheard of. So there are, I think there's a smidge more for a couple of venues like Edinburgh, the heartland of rugby. We've got one of your favourite sons, the old Hamish Watson in the mix. Yeah. And, and, you know, so I don't know why you haven't bought them. And also Liverpool. I know we're not football, but we're just as funny. Yeah. <laughs> if good. not more funny. If not more, if not more interesting. We, we, actually, we actually get, actually do get injured for a living and, and actually do tell funny stories and, Fighting hard, I don't know where I'm going with this. But <laughs> what I was going to say is... Um, that was fucking weird. Man. It was weird, wasn't it? I, think I thought I had a point, but I didn't <laughs> have a point. Are <laughs> you trying to make a point about footballers falling over and faking Are you on about the Ronaldo Well, no, I was... I was I, yes, about I, the Ronaldo I actually I was, really wanted to help you, but there was nothing. I, was, I, I, do I, this. I have to... Like, like, just, just to completely segue away from that and realise <laughs> what the hell was that. Don't listen to that. Please edit it out. So it's not... They don't think <laughs> that's this type of content that's coming. I've done like a little mini tour of late around our venues. I was in Liverpool at the weekend for the Grand National and then I was up it. I drove past through Sheffield on my way up to my mum and dad's house and then drew, drove across to Manchester last night to be with Super Kev this morning So and then drove back through Oxford this morning you've so done a recce for us I have literally how did you get on in uh, entry uh, not very well actually did you not no well done Sam I did, Wiley I mean, you're yeah. all there or not no uh, it actually uh, Mumbag dude did a uh, parade on Thursday but he's well retired now yeah. he's, not, he's an old boy but he, nice. he paraded on he paraded that's the way people Thursday. describe me halfway through my career <laughs> breaking news is like, we've got tickets being sent back from <laughs> Liverpool Sheffield <laughs> 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 refunds please uh, um, but no, it was it was tough. It was, it was hard to to win up at Aintree this year. I mean, yeah, Samuel Lico, fair play to him. Did you, like, did right? you ever go right? I cleaned up, yeah. Did you? On yeah, what? Did, yeah. Santini each way in the Grand National. Um, who did I have? I laid Edward Stone to lose. Uh, did nice. you do that? I didn't know you could yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can bet on them to not win. Yeah, yeah and he was 1.5 on favourite yeah. one, so... You only wow. do it for a really yeah. short favourite. Yeah, like that, you wouldn't do it for like a, a two to one or a three to one, but he was like, what was he, one point? I love yeah. how you know all the terminology. Oi, mean, mean streets of Bristol, isn't it, <laughs> teaching you? What do you spend the winnings on? I imagine more video gaming gear and extensions to that video uh, gaming chair. What have I spent it, yeah. More tracksuits? I haven't bought a tracksuit in ages. Oh, you get the free ones, don't you? No, no, this is pay good money for that, the same as you did for the gears off tie. Off tie? What? Oh, PS yeah, shopping. <laughs> What's that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah nice. That's not you don't know. Like, you buy everything. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know we were revealing that oh, online, yeah, but yeah. yeah. No, um, no, I bought a track in ages. I don't know what I spent on. I don't know what I spent on. Save it, I guess. We've got trackies available on our merch yeah, list. We've got, we've got GBR one. GBR, one's, GBR one's, one's coming. Yeah, we'll get you kitted out. Oh, mate. What do they look like? Are they all right? It has they been designed. He's been yeah, colouring in the paperwork. <laughs> so they're, they're really odd shaped. They're super yeah. tight. Um, real, like, real loose on the thighs, but they're tight on the ankles. Yeah. 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 Um. <laughs> we have got Ben Kayser joining us in Oxford Hamish Watson as you said in Edinburgh Scott Cornell in Cardiff that's going to be noisy Nick Easter in Newcastle Mark Quater Manchester Jiffy is coming to Swansea mm-hmm. so Rory Best in Dublin Jeremy Guskin in Bath and you're going to dip into Nottingham oui. are you ready? yeah when is it? 
That's reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. Look, my, my schedule's not very busy. We'll get our yeah. people to call your people. Do you, do you have a staff like has to you or you just don't know your schedule? And no, I, I, don't have a, I don't have a PA at all. I just go on. As soon as someone tells you something, boom, go on to calendar, type it in, and then it gives me a two-day reminder. Oh, nice. Well, I like that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's well organised. Good, good stash. We are going to have a lot of fun. We are going to have a lot of fun. I think as much fun, actually, in terms of the content we create around the shows as... Yes the shows themselves. But if you would like to come and join us, there are not many tickets left. We'd love to see you there. Have a little look at goodbadrugby.com and um, yeah, it's going to be... My mom wants to come to the Nottingham One. She can come. It's the 11th of May. The 11th of May is the Nottingham One. Nice. This is Gen is in. She's in. VIP tickets. Yeah. Brilliant. Your mum. She gets a one-to-one with... She gets a one-to-one with Hask. She's very fit. She's <laughs> right, yeah. well, I, look, well, I look at her and go, God, I didn't know you brought your sister, really. Yeah, you are. I get that a lot. Fair Fair play. Wait. Mm. But in the background like that, stop making <laughs> jokes at us. Yeah. The, the, the eyes have changed. Yeah. And this is unseating again. Yeah. Just just be you and me on stage. Right. Yeah. To wrestle like, in the I mean, like, but going, heads. Oh, the big yawn. Oh, this is this is getting shy. Take it hand on my mouth. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sheffield, London, Birmingham, Bath, and South End also on the list. Head to goodbarrowby.com to get your tickets. How was the journey back last night? Let's start at the end. Of the game? Yeah. Um, did you was, go? Did you go there expecting to beat Claremont? As you did, yeah, of course. We, well, I expected to. Mm. I wanted to win. It's tough, isn't it? You, you go there, and yeah, you can't necessarily say, "Oh, I expect to win," because you're not expected to win against uh, away in France against this French team. I've seen with Quinns, like Quinns struggled. Um, did any English teams besides us win in France the weekend? La Rochelle so. done Bordeaux, didn't yeah, they? Quite they did badly. a proper job on them. Um, mate, French league's mental. What's their cap? Like fifteen and a half mil. Yeah. Yeah, ours is 5.2 or something at the moment, isn't it? So it's, it's, it's always a salary cap with you, isn't it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, a, it go, it's a massive it? problem, boys. It's a massive problem. We've got one squad and we're also trying to compete in the domestic comp and do Premiership Cup and we've got like 40 players. They've got loads of players. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And they're all mint. So it's tough for us to juggle like what we're doing. Um, whether or not you put all your eggs in one basket with the Europe or the Prem and yeah, so fuck off. Oh, right. <laughs> Just because you're retired, it does not bother you anymore. No, no, don't you dare. I am a massive advocate. I fight the good fight for you lads. No, don't. Mm. I fight the good fight for you lads all um, the time. No, no, but it, they're obviously giants, and they French leagues have always been been known to have like superstar players. And I'm not saying we haven't got superstars, but it's it's a bit daunting. That you go over there and you hear about all the big names like they had Fafana. Uh, you obviously Raka. didn't watch that that meeting we had with the. Um, with Brett Gosper, former head of World Rugby, and Mark... Um, no, I did. Mark Evans, and I, I, went, did, and I yeah. went hard. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I did. I'm all about the boys. Right, you. You. Pay more cash. Stop yeah. fucking about. But, you know, we can't... They can't pay more cash or play less games. They can't organise anything. They can't mm. even organise a global season, so I just wouldn't even bother. Don't even worry about it. Save yeah. No, you're right. I, I, always, I always do bring up the money. Let's, let's not talk about the money. money. Tell, us, tell us about the changing room. Because, actually, you've had a remarkable season... Nice. Change room, nice. yeah, lovely furnishings. <laughs> well, if you have more money, your less change would be nicer, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about what that win does for you at this point. Um, nothing really, because obviously, you did you remember when Saris played them and it snowed? They cancelled the game, played the day after, not yes. on TV, and Racker came out, and absolutely yes. ran amok, um, <laughs> scored three tries in twenty minutes or something. So, mate, they got deadly, deadly players. So. Even though you've got a 19 nil lead coming back to Welford Road, I don't think anyone's sitting there thinking, yeah, this is done and dusted. It's a good position to be in, although I probably thought we should have scored a few more. Love it. Mm. Do you like these back to back games? Is there a little bit of. No. There... no, you don't. No, I don't like the aggregate. I think, like, God, the for me, fans love them. But, yeah, because there's more games oh. and it's more suspense. But for me, it's it's like. We've worked this hard. We won our group. I don't want to go into a last sixteen and play two legs. I want to. Yeah, I want to go to the quarterfinals, base, semis, and the finals. They've basically given up the league. Uh, the, the like sort of little sort of little league structures where you play home and away to get the best teams to go through and then have a knockout. Yeah. Instead, they've yeah. just transferred. The, so if the we would have lost to Claremont, it would have meant absolutely nothing that we finished <laughs> top of the table. You know? all, they, all they've guaranteed is the best teams will play each other twice rather than having maybe you know your pointless zebra game. Exactly. And also, twice. I imagine like you're, I know you're kind of got a general surly demeanour as it was anyway. What does that mean, surly? Surly, just kind of mildly abrasive. You're kind of like okay. you're not. I wouldn't say you're like a ray Angry. of sunshine unless you know. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, look how, look how sunshiny you are. 
Uh, like, you know, this is like a miniature the emo- cloud. The emotion pouring. Yeah, the emotion pouring, yeah. We see it, the one in, uh, what's the character called in, everyone's watching in Kanto now, he's got kids, the one that follows around, there's a rain cloud above yeah. it. That's, uh, his name's Charlie, isn't it? That little kid who wears the yellow and black jumper. No, he and, controls the animals, doesn't he? I, I don't know where you're going with this now. <laughs> no, no, but what basically is you look miserable, is what I was trying to say. Yeah. But actually you're lovely. Do you know, I, I got told that, it really hit me the other really? week. Someone said to me, um, what they said, we were having a pint or whatever, and they said, oh, what's wrong with you? I said, there's nothing wrong with me. Said, well, you look miserable. I said, well, everyone always says that to me. I said, well, you probably look fucking miserable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it really hit me. I, I, I do look miserable. No, no, but I'm I'm not I... like I'm happy. Yeah. You yeah. just ain't smiling. Yeah, no. Do you know no, what I mean? Now yeah. he's trying to smile. He's like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But I, I, it look awkward. <laughs> <laughs> he, hasn't, no, he, I... he hasn't used those muscles <laughs> in so long. Do you know what like, I mean? <laughs> I walk around like that all the time. Everyone would be like, this bloke is fucking no, weird. Yeah. He's I, lost the plot. You look quite intimidating. Someone I told you the first time I met you, you look very intimidating, a bit like Dredrick Tatum. You've got the surly demeanour, but inside you're like, you might be like a sunflower, but at the moment you look like a, a rainy Scottish island just full of misery. Yeah, I got on a tube today. Obviously, I don't go on the tube much. Edgware Road, and I was changing, obviously, to get here to Parsons Green. There's the, you know, the metal benches, four seats on them, obviously. Yeah. So I sat down, there's four there. I sat down on that one. A bloke was sat there, and he put his green rucksack there, right? I sat on that one. As soon as I sat down, he went, fuck off. Stood up, <laughs> took his rucksack, walked to the other side of the platform, and I was like, geez, he couldn't be talking to me, like... And I was like, what's wrong, mate? And he didn't reply. And I was like, all right, nothing, leave it. I ain't bothered. He's obviously pissed off or something. And he was on the other side of the platform again. And then he turned around and he went, leave me alone. I went, mate, I'm not <laughs> even talking to you. Like, leave me alone. Do you know, like, That's London. I must, yeah. just, I must just be piss people off. Yeah, no, but I think what I was trying to get with it, what I was trying to get with this, is that it's very hard to know what mood you're in. But obviously, as soon as you start talking, your charm and lovely persona comes through. Mm. But what I was saying with the back to back, mm. <laughs> with the back to back games, Surely, it, obviously, going away to Claremont is a horrifically physical occasion. You're probably feeling a bit battered now and quite tired. Yeah. And then you know that you're going to have to climb another mountain and that emotional journey you're going to have to make to play at Wel- Welford Road this this week can be utter carnage. Oh, yeah, then you've got Quinn's week after. Um... So I just wanted to know what psychological point of view. Like, a, how old do you feel? Yeah. B, like, it's not, not just the back-to-back, but it's always like, Christ, give us a week to play somebody else, to refresh before we have to run into brick walls. That's what I mean. Obviously, they're going to be absolutely mustered to score 19 points and then start from scratch. So, um, yeah, in terms of the emotional side of the thing, I think like, at the end of the game, we said, like, boys, don't jump up and down cheering now because it really is not over. Although that sounds like a bit of a killjoy, but you, it's not, is it? It's, no. it's really not, and weirder things have happened. So, um, Emotionally, yeah, we, we're just, we'll come in. We've got training tomorrow. Uh, we're in three days this week, so we're doing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We usually do two on, one off, one on, one off play. But we're doing three days this week, having a bit more recovery, like ice baths and all that. So uh, we'll be fresh. We'll be fresh for the weekend, but I'd just wait and see. Just also, from, I just think quick off the top of my head, before anyone, from a marketing point of view, maybe you should get a T-shirt with, I'm smiling inside. <laughs> And then I'm people smiling are smiling on the inside. I'm smiling on the yeah, inside. Yeah. That could be his GBNR t-shirt. Yeah. Yes. I'm smiling on the inside. A little rainbow over the top. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> well, no, that sends different signals. Yeah. He might get some more 2022. attention. 2022. Well, he might get some more social media for us. <laughs> he so. might do. Can you talk us through the try? Yeah, the one meter try. Uh, uh, half a meter One for the show, real. Yeah. Um, I carried the first pick and go. Um, and then uh, someone else done a second. But I was at the bottom of the ruck, like trapped under someone, and someone shouted, Genji, fucking cow. So I just jumped up, hit the ball up. And the kitty, I think, went too low. And he like hit my laces, but he obviously didn't realise I'm, I'm six foot four. So I stretched out over the line and dotted down. Love it. Do you like scoring pies? Yeah, so I, I don't really get much of a buzz from it. If it's like a You celebrate like you do. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't <laughs> yesterday. I just got up and just went. And just walked off. You actually do celebrate more for other yeah. people. Oh, that's that's true. True. Yeah. Jack, Jack, I, I get buzzing Jack when I'm Jack Willis score, try yeah. always pretty, pretty But that's fun. because I rumoured him in the week and he he said something about like, geez boy, I've always dreamed of like playing for England, blah, 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 how good it would be to score a trial. I was like, I'll, I'll drive you over tomorrow. And I latched him over a line. So I was yeah. like, that's mint. Yeah, but well, I've seen the other ones, the other clips of, uh, I was watching some highlights of, of Leicester play. Must have not anything else been on TV. But um, <laughs> And uh, I was having a weak moment into rugby. And you you celebrate mad. Why Why did you do that? Why do you love it so much? Because you've got that camaraderie. Yeah, we, well, we've got so many young, and we never used to do it ever at Leicester, no. ever. And the Chiefs boys used to do it, and I used to love watching them do it. And I thought, well, I'd love to have that at the club. Um, and also, we've got so many young boys coming through, like Freddie Stew, obviously, we had on the show. And like these boys, their first sort of, seasons in the premiership is like senior players and 
they're scoring all these tries and I just, I just think they should just celebrate them like it's class you don't get to score many tries do you James no you don't they actually used no. to do it at um, Leicester but all those players that used to do it Jono put them through a wood chipper out the back <laughs> <laughs> anyone that had any emotion did, any, did they used to celebrate back in Leicester no no but anyone who did would get filled in by Dorian Ware well, not Dorian yeah. Ware didn't fill anyone in but you know what I mean like all the <laughs> we, try, we try not to be too like um, I don't know what the word is like uh, over the top in people's faces but we like to yeah we like to celebrate with each other on the sometimes you're blowing after a scrum that, yeah, exactly. on the Maratoji like scale if one being normal and Mara being ten, where yeah. would you say we're at six? Six. 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 It's important to celebrate life's little moments. Definitely. Well done to you and your boys. Dare I ask? Do you think you can win it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You looking at a double? So <laughs> 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 like we want to win everything. We never go out thinking we're going to lose. But... How remarkable an achievement would it be for an English club to do a double? Excellent on it. Twice. Brilliant. They did it twice? They did it double twice? No, they did it. I think they did it once. Sarah's done it twice. But I was thinking more yeah. of the diminishing salary cap. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, that that's, well, again, I don't really want to revert to money, but it would be nuts for this year for English club to do a double, wouldn't it? Yeah. No, well, not necessarily English. You know, it would. No, yeah. It would be mental. But those French clubs are flying as well. I think we wear a claim on like 8th or ninth. Yeah. Yeah, some of those other clubs are like... To lose. To lose and that. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, they are... And obviously they got half the French squad as well. Got Dupont, all those boys. So. And now they've broken a twelve-year hoodoo. They're all absolutely What's beyond the hoodoo. You, yeah. you know, like they couldn't win a Grand Slam for twelve years. Oh right, yeah. and they, you know, they waited for that second coming, and they actually haven't. They didn't choke. All of them are in the form of their lives. All of them are young, and all of them are on fire. You know what I mean? That like it's kind yeah, of quite a nice firing. melting point. Pop, yeah. pop, plus all the cash, plus all the you know. I think we're different though. I do think we're a different type of team, like Leicester. I think you can like when teams are firing and stuff. I think we get that obviously because of all the rich history we've got in the competition. I think when you talk about like those European titles and stuff, it probably brings a bit of a different mindset for for teams when they play what, us. What is Bort? Because obviously I had Borthus with England, but I haven't seen him at a club. What would what would he say before? A game like Clem, was he a screamer shouting? What did he say? He, yeah, he, he fired up it this week. He fired up it this week. He doesn't usually like go nuts, but he fired up a little bit. Um, more so touched on like where we've been. Um, Leicester is a club for the last five years. We haven't really been in any big trophies, and today's a big game. And he was like, "This is where this team should be. Um, you've worked hard for it, and don't miss the opportunity." It wasn't like an inch by inch. <laughs> it wasn't one. It wasn't one of them. But okay. um, probably saving that for next week. He turned a tiny bit whimsical post match. He said, "Not now." But one day I might look back on a result like this and get, you know, warm, a warm feeling. Well, that's what Steve's like. He don't give off much emotion. I'm sure you've seen that as well. Um, but yeah, he does sometimes have those little grins. You wonder what he's grinning about. And because he is actually really quite an emotional guy. Underneath. I think he is. Oh, he's, he's of course really he's sweet. emotional. He's a real sweetheart he cares, underneath. Like, yeah, he, he cares. Really care. He really cares. And that's why I've got so much time for the bloke. And that's why the club's doing so well. Because he really cares about Archie Vanes, the academy hooker who couldn't throw anything like oh, he was a hooker he just couldn't throw at all <laughs> and now he's like he hit like 11 from 11 the other week in, in the champ for knots like, and that's all down to Arch as well but Steve like just he's just so good at developing characters you know would you ever would you ever have a cup of coffee with us no not, not a chance oh, oh, he, like, he played with him I, played I know with you since played I with 16. him but now you're media and you come with a microphone I'm not sure that he I don't know if he likes you uh, it's very possible <laughs> I don't know if he likes you yeah I'm not sure very possible do you know he, if got, he, likes you? he got a lot of, we gave him a lot of shit for a long <laughs> he probably don't like you yeah. Yeah. he likes me no I think I think he likes you yeah, I think he likes always me. Got he's weird well. because like, Steve usually gets someone with characters who are quite different <clears> to him he yeah. likes people who are quite loud and oh, like, he? he likes Marlo yeah does he yeah, yeah. he gets more Joe. he likes Hans he was always lovely to me he, he, you know he, 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 I've always said this you know, with Eddie and obviously his success in that initial period, Steve was down to 90% of him because no one else put the hard work in the termination. Oh, he's said craft, development. Well, he said what that imagine? about the Lions as well. Yeah, he, He'd he, never tell you about it either, which is something nah. obviously you got I mean, to he, respect. On that Lions tour midweek, if he wasn't if he wasn't there and put the work in the whole tour with Shambolo, would, have been, would yeah. have been an absolute sham. Well, I mean, it's a disservice to those guys. But, you know, they would, <clears> certainly we wouldn't have had the care and attention that we deserve. All I know is he, he never drank because his body was in such bad shape his drainage his lymphatic drainage was so bad that if he drank his legs just swelled up to the size of Professor Clubs <laughs> so whenever we are on a team social he had to eat uh, he had to eat he had to drink full fat coke and protein bars that was all he... oh, but I'm also got another theory is that you know those people that don't drink I reckon Borthers if you actually got them smashed up might turn into but... an absolute machine his favourite film is old school 
if that's what I mean. And I think he might be like that. Well, we used to say, we used to say when he was at Bath that he because he'd literally come in, do all these things, he'd do an hour of stretching, an hour of uh, fire ups, uh, yeah, oh. fire ups, all that sort of stuff, and then he'd just go home. We just think he'd go home, and he must just go in and start drinking whiskey. You know, Borthos is so pedantic on obviously the line outs, like it's, it's, it lives and breathes it. I obviously in his mind was so bad that he went through the side of trying to bollock me to like. Basically helping me, he was, you know what I mean. He was just such a nice guy that he was like, "Oh God, just don't, just stand there, Hask, out of the way." He was like so sweet about it. So you just come with me. And don't, 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 look, don't bother about the sheets and all the confusing things. Just stand there and do that. Lift me when I tell you. I was like, "Thanks, Steve." <laughs> That's a challenge. Brilliant. I'd love to have a chat with him. Um, do you want a quick squiz through some of the others? Quinn's came back against Montpellier. That's still alive. But that, that, that's a vital one for them in terms of. Oh, being, told they were thirty-four 0 down. They were. Yeah, yeah. forty twenty-six final score. Forty twenty-six. So yeah, for the combat. Yeah, only so they, they are mad. Yeah. Quinn's. It is a it is a yeah. mad team to follow. Yeah. And they could have they could have scored a couple more as well on the way back. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I I started watching it and I had to, I had to <clears> turn it off, and they literally were camped for the first fifteen minutes in the. Montpellier half. So well, what, was, what what happened then? I don't know. There was an inter, there was a couple of interceptions, but then and a couple of breakaway Montpellier tries, but they were just cutthroat. And I turned it back on. It was twenty four nil at half time, and I was like, "Well, I'm definitely going to watch the second half because this is typical." Yeah, Quinn's Quinn's terrible play. Play. Win it, then, yeah. then Montpellier scored straight off the bat, and then the comeback started. And as soon yeah. as they scored one, you just see their whole. They go, "Okay, this is on." I and didn't see it, but I, I spoke to Marcus last night at text him after we finished our game. I said, I've seen the game, like what happened sort of thing. And he said, mate, we were just off it on the first half. Yeah. Like, I said, look, if there's a team who's going to come back and score another 40 well, I spoke to Danny year. Kerr and he was like, mate, honestly, we just make life so hard for ourselves. Yeah. It's like amazing. It's, if we actually just applied that commitment and that attention to detail at the right time, we'd, just, we'd smash we'll anyone. In that situation. Yeah, we just keep, yeah. Go, we keep go giving up and then go, oh God, oh, and actually then turn it on. Yeah, they, they, I mean... They played quite an aggressive, proper aggressive old wasp type defence yeah. where they just flew up. And Montpellier, caused, yeah, yeah, it caused them a few problems, but they figured it out. The what did you make of Zach Mercer? Played well, didn't he? Good man of the match, didn't he? Yeah, yeah he played well. Star of the match, scored yeah. two. Play, yeah, play, play, yeah, star, yeah, star, star. I mean, he is quite brown. Brown. Have they changed star? Oh, because uh, oh, Heineken. Heineken, yeah. Um, he did play well. Fair play. He was a great player. I thought Zach Mercer was always a good player. Nice kitty as well. Yeah, yeah nice. Always a nice yeah. guy. Shared a room with him in Brighton. But yeah, obviously, that, uh, media are talking about him yeah. now. Yeah, in England, no chance. Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> um, interesting to watch that space. Uh, Leinster too strong in Connacht. La Rochelle far too strong for Bordeaux. Begler, Brizzle, Sale. Did you watch any of that? Nope. nope. I'm not I sure did. many people. You did. Yeah. Well done. Mm. You, get a medal, <laughs> yeah. you get a medal for that. Do you, yeah. do you watch this thing with uh, with Bristol at the moment and how you're flying? Any any regrets? No, no. <laughs> um, obviously, I went back for very different reasons to rugby, yeah. so it's not. Um, I don't watch the results and think. Oh no! Fine. Again, emotional They won. They won. I think they've oh, lost no. a million games. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> um, but I have got a lot of mates there, so They're like fine. whatever. Like Joyce is captain at the moment, so I really enjoy someone who I've known since I was sixteen. The old watching them, king of binge. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yes, it's class. Someone who came from South Mead from absolutely nothing. Similar story to myself, captain in his hometown club in Europe. I just think it's mint. So yeah. I really enjoy watching it. Good win for them. Well, what you're saying, if, is there a cash amount that Leicester can get you back? Is that, is that a set ship has uh, sailed? Clause 42. Clause 42, uh, section May 5, clause. the Johnny May clause. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm at an home. Yeah. Right, okay. But what you're saying is there's a chance if fourth and stuff. saying it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's heading home because there's a direct train from Bristol to London to get There's a direct train yeah. from Leicester to St. Pancras. Hour saying. and five. Is it? tiny. Yeah. I Brilliant. It's tiny. Hell of a win for Ulster. Yeah, that red card lose. after. Yeah, yeah. What was that? Red still card? a hell of a win. To lose yeah. a to lose a seven nil after seven minutes, and then a red um, card at eight minutes. And did you see those other red cards this weekend? There were some yeah. mental what, ones. What about the one in your game? You know, that was tough. That was tough. Like, like the sun. I know it didn't look it on the. I know it sounds like an absolute terrible excuse, but <laughs> we. So we we played away from the sun first half. Obviously, you've seen us putting the spiral bombs up on Matsushima and stuff because the sun was literally beaming down. And then when we played that way, I think Guy, he's good in D. Like he's a good defender. Yeah. He like ran up to get in the passing channel and didn't realize Fritz Lee was coming on like a hard line, and the sun was like gleaming 
real bad and I think he just didn't see him and just went boof but like imagine on the pitch you've done it before and you like ran head on head and someone yeah. and just yeah, yeah the post do you know what I mean <laughs> yeah, but, but exactly yeah. exactly if that was a person that, that, that is what's happened but because they had the ball he got red carded I got asked after do I think it was a red I said well head on head so probably but upon reflection like he, I don't know how does Guy Porter feel off the back of that he felt alright actually he yeah. passed his HIA Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of... Oh, in terms of the reps? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't gone into too much detail. When someone gets... Because we, we won, it's a bit different. Well, we've right? just been talking a lot about it, about the moving parts in a game. I just was interested as, you know... It, he felt, it's I think so he felt difficult. Bit, I think he felt a bit hard done by because he had no intention to even tackle the bloke, let alone... And what point did he make up that made-up excuse about the sunlight? No, I made that excuse. Oh, right, fine. That's for him. Because I, I quite like that as, you know, blaming me for running into the post. It was the sun. Well, James, it was a closed stadium roof in Cardiff at night. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Your Honour. And your glasses. And I was, yeah. So, but I, will, I will get you to wonders. represent me next time. But he, he didn't turn around and go, with oh, the sun, that's used to be... No, I, I, I just went over to ref, said, look, the sun's gleaming down, blah, blah, blah. But they they were having none of it. Uh, what, uh, um, what did what was Yulesy like by the way after the England game? Because I I haven't, I haven't done a show. Since then. Oh, he's obviously he's gutted, mate. But I just said to him, look, mate, like we, no, everyone knows you didn't mean yeah, to yeah. get sent off, and he's all right, isn't he? Yeah, that's, that's sort of become your role a little bit. Like we we had we talked to a lot of players, kind of about. Um, and actually, when we talked to Eddie and Doctor <clears throat> Doctor the boys, they've kind of said your role is kind of a bit more of an emotional leader in that. In Obviously, we know what you're doing at Leicester, but England, kind of put your arm around people, kind of making sure that people feel they can be themselves, they can be honest. Do you, are you doing that on purpose, especially with someone like Charlie Yules, yeah. trying to make sure he's okay? I've known Yulesy since I was 16 as well. So, like, I played all the age group stuff with him. I've never been best mates with the bloke, but, like, we know each other reasonably well, like, emotionally on and off the pitch. Um, and, obviously, I've been in that setup since 2016, so a bit sooner than him, so I know the older boys as well. So, I, I just try to get to know the young boys now. I know the sort of my age, sort of like 26, 27 year olds and then the older boys. So yeah, it's easy for me to sort of just dot around and, and pick people up. And like when someone suffers, not so, you're not died, like, but no. when something like that happens, you obviously think that that's the end of the world because ultimately, well, who knows what would have happened, but we put up a good fight. Yeah. But it's very hard with 14 from yeah. a minute in. So he would have felt terrible, I'm sure, but he had a beer in that after and he, he said bye and that was it. Do you think, um, obviously with the 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 red card in the Southern Hemisphere in the 20 minutes and then bringing another guy on. Do you, would you, do you think that's the right thing to I th do up here? And I, so I, I was always against that. And then upon reflection, after seeing something like that, Guy Porter's, I think if there is absolutely no malice and no intention to actually really hurt someone for a high tackle, because like you said, there's a lot of moving parts. I, I do think potentially someone should be able to come back on. Um, yeah. How long that would be off the pitch, I don't know. Because I, um, I don't think there should be, I, like, what do you always get? Three weeks? The yeah, back of it. yeah. I don't games, think yeah. you should get banned either. I think you're getting punished by going off in the first minute of your international. That is a punishment for a player in enough. Oh, he'd care a lot more about that than missing three games for Bath. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think he'd be happy to get banned <laughs> by Bath <laughs> playing on it. Well, we can't say that. Can you? you can't say yeah, that. Well, I can we say can. That, yeah. We can say that. <laughs> you if, do. I was, if I was playing for Bath, I would have gone to my car and got a shooter and shot someone <laughs> just to get out of playing for them. Every, every 78th minute of every international. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Uh, three weeks off. Thank yeah. you, sir. It was a. He I mean, I, I, without getting into the detail, it was a hell of a day that I took in them. Did it? Did I mean? Did, can you remember the sort of? Well, obviously, you're gutted because you lost it. But do you remember the the emotions off the back of that one? Yeah. yeah. What was what was the chat going through? Because obviously, you then start winning momentum, didn't you, for yeah. such a period of time? The defense really got on top, and you could just see. You could you we, did you notice the crowd? How much they got into it? Yeah, we it thought we were going to win. Phenomenal. You know, like we 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 said as soon as he went off, I got everyone in. And I just said, boys, we train with 13 people every week. Do you know what I mean? We train with 13. We train with two men down every week for situations like that, and. I said, this is what we prep for. So we've got two choices. We can either fly into it or roll over and get 40 points on us. And we'll hope they didn't get too far off. For, <laughs> but, um, for 68 minutes, like, we had a really good opportunity to win that game. I think it was 15 all up until 68. Yeah. And then that was it. I know you're kind of built of the um, sporting mentality, like all of us kind of were in terms of, you know, what you did today is never good enough. You're always in the pursuit of next, next, and next. If you cast your mind back to when we were talking about during that sort of pandemic, and you know you were talking, apparently setting up that um, the next union, you were concerned mm. about pay, concerned about that, and you sort of put a big target on your back. And we had that conversation with you, saying, "Look, you know, you do know you're putting more pressure." And you were like, "Right, this is the right thing to do." And then you fast forward, 
you know, past that Six Nations where ultimately that was one of the best games, I think, you know, in terms of where you scrummed, where you played um, against uh, Ireland and put your head above the parapet. And then obviously finishing the Six Nations, one of the players earmarked by England, absolute star both on and off the field. Is it amazing how it moves on? Do you, do you appreciate the journey you're on at the moment? Do you, do you, do you, you know, do you take a pinch of salt with it or do you, you know, you're just quite chilled? Um, I think it might have been Eddie who said it to me, but you you never get time to sit down. I think he told me about a book, and basically one of the things was you never get time to sit down, stop, and really appreciate your career until the end. Um, so I'm not thinking about anything Fine. at all, really. Um, but do you, do you really you genuinely because you are playing no, I mean some that. of the finest yeah, rugby of your I, career, and I'm not. I won't sit there and say fucking hell, I ate here and that blah 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 because you enjoy getting yeah, the yeah. tires pumped up. Everyone does, but like I don't sit there at any time and think right, I'm. I'm the best, blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't ever think today I'm going to be the best. But, like, I just, I think for me, I've got a decent amount of natural genetic ability. And I feel if I apply myself in the week, learn my stuff, do all my prep, which I've been really emphasizing for the past few months, and it's worked. It's worked. Do you think that's combined as well with all that, with the maturity and the in terms of the, your leadership stuff on the field giving that responsibility seems to brought the best out well it was well. discipline mate it was yeah. discipline so like I, I used to go to bed at three o'clock in the morning thought I had insomnia um, would take like tablets go to sleep and all that sort of stuff and I'd be like yeah can't sleep near the pill blah blah but really what I was doing I was just staying up gaming all the time I was like being honest I was just gaming having coffees at eight o'clock you know just because like you're in camp and you can um, and I thought right you know what I'm going to go to bed at 10, get in bed at 10, be in bed by half 11, like that's early for me. Um, Pull the end of it off a couple of times. Well, no, <laughs> I, 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 I stopped, I stopped. Did you? I stopped masturbating, yeah. Jesus. I know oh. this is probably not the no, time no, to no, tell no, you. Why we are a show for all yeah. shapes. Yeah. So Mike Tyson, um, I think he went six months, yeah. I went six months without fornicating. <laughs> um, so I seen that and then I've done a lot of studies on under blood tests, seeing testosterone levels and apparently you get 140% increase in testosterone if you don't ejaculate for seven days. So yeah, I didn't wank all week. Jesus, Matt, I'm why, on, why, I'm why, on why, my fight in 10 days. Sorry, that's me yeah. cutting my hands yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Corks, sorry, love. So yeah, that it's was just actually, gone dry in your room. That if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah, I, so, so I, I that, the sleep and the not, not knocking one out and everything else and just a bit of discipline. It was discipline, day. it was discipline. So I was up at six o'clock every single morning myself, Nolsey, Sinks not towards the Yanks, his back with some bits. He'd be doing his own bits, but he'd still be up at yeah. six. Me and Nolsey were next door. Sinks, Nolsey, me, Dicky. I can't remember who came in with me. Launchers came in with me after that. But I was up at six, straight down to the spa. We do 15 minutes of sauna, straight into the ice baths, plunge, hold my breath under there for 10 seconds, come out, do some breathing, back in the sauna, plunge, do some breathing, boom, start my day, go down early for training, do all my stretching, all my activation, do sleds, do, and I'd never done any of this, right? And I was like, fucking hell, this is so boring. Like, because I do, I get bored, and that's why I don't do it. I'd rather be up having a coffee and a bit of band with the boys. Um, but I'd done all this stuff, and it was, it was, it, because I was in camp, it's, it's a bit easier. It's not yeah. easy to do at home. No. Because yeah, you've got yeah. the babby, you've got the missus, you've got all that sort of stuff. And But when I was in camp, I thought, I've got nothing else to do except for game. So I left my laptop at home. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd done all right against Wales with it. That was only three days of, of no masturbation. Um, and then I went the full week against Ireland, and that happened. And then I went the full week against France, and I didn't do Bloody it last hell. week. <laughs> when you were, K- you were a posted. bit slower running from fullback you were carrying a bit <laughs> not the baby rider who's had some swing in three shots yeah. that is amazing though, with the kind of the, that approach and the the discipline stuff and almost like a later kind of later lesson do you now take that as a framework going right not jokes aside about the, the masturbation thing but in terms of the discipline that's going not right. joke James no I know I know I know that, but what I mean is, is, in terms of like your key golden pillars, that might be quite transitory as a mindset. Even if it, eat, yeah, so that's what it's one of them, isn't it? Like, I could have went out every single day, five times a day, and I yeah. could have played the same, but because I was, I disciplined myself, I, did, I didn't want to do it. I was making sure, even though I didn't want to get about it, I woke up at six o'clock and be like, oh, I just want to go back to bed, but I'd go and do it. It would make me think, right, well, you've done all this now, you've got to yeah. turn up, like, you, you've got no excuses. That's, how, that's what I'll base my entire career on, that that mentality yeah. of actually just going, right, what do I need to do? Go and do it, and then you just drive confidence from it. Yeah. So is that now your favourite? Yeah, well, you do get confidence from it. You do. Like, I'm, on, on match day, sometimes I'd be jogging around and I'd be like, fuck it, I feel terrible. But then, like, when I was doing that, I was like, I have done everything I need to do. There's nothing more I could do, uh, have done. Left every stone unturned and boom, I'm ready. And that was that was my mindset when I was Just to be clear, I, I, I shaked Bird once on the day of a game and I got man of the match. So it doesn't really well, matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really matter. Essentially means nothing. It does actually, but good discipline. Yeah. Do you 
do you feel in a very different place on the pitch now? Um, probably from after 2020 when we had that like terrible Six Nations and stuff after that. Um, yeah, I probably had to like, I, I felt like I wasn't in the game enough. Um, so that's another thing that I've been working on is like getting involved more. Um, but like I said to you earlier, like I'm not thinking about it too much. I'm just, as cliche as it is, just next job, next job. I want to beat Claremont next week after that, whoever we got, Quinns, then Bristol, back to Europe. I just want everything. Let's just, let's just go. Does, does confidence as well <clears throat> come from the fact that you are now established? You sort of expect to be in the England, well, not expect, you know, but expect, I know what you mean. but no. you're confident yeah. in the, in, you know, if you're playing well, that's going to come. You're, co- you're comfortable in your environment of where you are at Leicester, what your role is there. And that also, Along with all the prep stuff that you're doing, that yeah, that, the, the that prep's definitely the biggest one. Um, I'm, and I'm being genuine when I say this. I am never comfortable. Um, I have been comfortable at Leicester, but since Steve's been, I'm, I'm not comfortable that I'm going to play every week. Uh, sometimes he might say, right, this week I feel this is the right way to go. I'd rather have you off the bench. And you've seen that with Ben Young; he's been on the yeah. bench a few times, and Coley and the other boys in England. I don't think any of us are ever comfortable. Um, in terms of selection, but it drives performance and training. So that's the that's the method behind it, and we've all invested into that. And our training is a very very high quality training environment, and that's why why we do it. Interesting. Is there any part of you that's got any interest? Given the coaches you're working with, is is the seed of coaching growing? For me, part? yeah. Do I want to coach? Yeah. No. Never. I won't say never, but right now, no. All I want to do is play. Yeah, sure. I just what interesting because you, you talk more about the coaches and what you're learning, and it, it's been really noticeable that, about your sort of interest in what you're doing yeah. beyond just for life. On playing. For yeah. life, and other prospects and stuff. So I went into business and, and done some other bits of people, and I definitely I've learned a lot from the people that I work with, Steve, Eddie, those boys that yeah. are very. I don't know what the word is, me- mechanical, like they, they're like machines. Yeah, they? yeah. Like I've learned a lot from them. Um, <clears throat> but no, I, right now, no, I, I don't feel like I do. I do individual coaching. If someone said, so Richard Hill said there was this boy, uh, to Tariq, I think his name was, he was at London Irish. He moved to Lucid from number eight, struggling with scrummaging. So I gave him a phone call and gave him some tips and stuff. But I, I know this sounds quite selfish. I haven't got the energy to be ringing up loads of people all the time just yeah. like doing that. So I, if someone asks, then yeah, I'll give them a. I'll it was it was more just sort of. I mean, you are you are so switched on and so interested in everything around you. I just wondered whether you know, as you work with Eddie and Steve Borthwick and Kevin Sinfield, whether there's a seed that's growing. Potentially, or I'm, I'm not aware of it. Yeah, day. it might be in the back of my head somewhere. But like, yeah, with Kev, like Kev cares so much. He's always got a smile on his face, and he comes in, pats you on the back with everything, even when you do something bad, you know, like he makes you feel good about yourself. He's got a real good tendency for that. Like half time, Steve said to me, like that you were the blip in defense in that first half, you got to pull your finger out. And I was like, all right, boom. And I went out and started slotting a few boys. So like they're, they're very clever people. So like that will stick with me now, the way he got that out of me, you know, yeah, like that doesn't happen very often, but you'll find a coach. Yeah. But it's un- yeah. It's understanding personality. He, Some he understands need, me so well. Chris, yeah. Chris needs a little hug and a rub on and I I was a bit like you I always needed someone to fire me up a little bit mm. and go actually you know you realise you missed that tackle I want to give him a rub on I the bottom like <laughs> give him a rub on the bottom half as we're going to go off and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, never, yeah. I played at uh, Newcastle once and we never won at Newcastle we were always crap and Dean Ryan came in and did the old thing where he's running he fucking hoed the Lucas A bottles and nearly broken his foot you could see it visually hey. the pain that he had in his foot <laughs> as he's walking around He's like, none of you give a shit. And I was like, then Tom May made a line break and it was one of those where he's getting a pass. He's inside someone getting a pass that way and I'm coming the other way. So he's getting the pass that way and I'm coming from the other side. He's got no Ended idea up. I'm coming. Yeah. And it was but it was one that didn't hurt him, but he was laughing because we both basically did forward somersaults in the air and landed and he was laughing. I was like, sorry, mate, Dean, Dean got into me. <laughs> but yeah, but, I, I would, but that's, that is what makes a good coach is when he... You, you've got to yeah. treat everyone differently. That was Steve's probably wouldn't like Steve would tell you himself. That's probably something that he needs to work on was understanding people. Um, because he's obviously always been so organized himself and so on it himself that he needs to probably understand the squad a bit more. And that was why, um, we worked so well together because I'd say, Look, this guy needs that, this guy needs this. And he comes to me and say, Do you think blah blah blah? And 
yeah, he's just he's very very understanding now, and it's, it shows, I guess, because the squad's firing. Do, do you think with um, the stuff around kind of that when you were trying to set up the other organisation stuff, because you put your head above the parapet and were kind of quite certain and quite vocal about the way you wanted to be, have you? Because it seems to me that you've carried on that kind of assertiveness and confidence in yourself, but also um, you've made peace with who you are. You want to ha- everyone around you to have a good time, it looks like. You want the environment to be right. You want people to express themselves. Has that got anything to do with it? Because it seems like you've grown into that, where you're sort of a bit uncertain sometimes if you're as yourself, you yeah. now seem to be like, I'm Ellis Genge, this is what I do. If, I, if I'm going to play, I want to play with my balls to the wall and I want everyone to have a good time around me. Is that yeah, kind of Yeah, I think standard? something that that opened my eyes up to is that fuck, there really ain't that many people who want to stand up for everyone um, in the game. And like, I thought there was loads. Yeah, I thought there was loads and then you soon find out there wasn't. So it was almost every man for himself. So I thought, fuck it, someone's got to do it. Um, going back two years or whatever. Um And yeah, I'd say that would probably ignited me to think, right, well, these boys, obviously, they need guidance, you know, like some of these young boys who wouldn't say boo to a goose need need some guidance. And and yeah, I probably started putting my arm around people from then. Can I ask you uh, a couple of bits just from the Six Nations? Have you seen or spoken to Seb Negri? Off the back of the yeah, interview. once or twice. He's coming on my mate Stag in July, so I spoke oh, is to him he? a little bit then. Yeah, he's good mates with Henry Harper um, from Hartbury. So that was a lovely touch. You got a lot of, rightly so, a lot of. Yeah, but like, I didn't do it for the fucking. No, of course you didn't. Do you know what I mean? But I just wonder. A minute, you don't want to be like, oh, look at me. No, no, no. no. I, right, I wouldn't but... for a moment suggest that. But it's it, you know. people did though. That's crazy, isn't it? People do. People do do that. Really? People pick it's just anything. weird, isn't it? It's just weird. But how are you supposed to get? How else are you supposed to get hold of him? You haven't got his number or find yeah. him? Do you know what I mean? You just go. It's easy to message him out. Sorry, I didn't have his number. He just he just messaged me on Twitter. Yeah, I was like, cheers, mate. Love that. Tell us about being England's running back in Paris. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Um, I got whacked a few times. Um, that for Lemsa, we played uh, Montpellier in the Challenge Cup, the below the Champions Cup, in the final at Twickenham once, and he absolutely murdered me in a carry. It really hurt my shoulder. So when I was running back at the line, I thought I'm going to go straight at him. Then I remembered what happened. <laughs> <turned the other laughs> yeah, because there was there was a couple of times because we were watching in the stand. And it was like when you set off and you do a little bit of footwork that doesn't hold all your uh, doesn't hold your full momentum, you're lethal. But it was one where you ran, did the shimmy sauce of an enormous one off at a right angle. Well, that was because I seen Antonio and Vilemse on the right hand side on their own, and I thought I could go around these boys. Like I'm quick enough to go around them. But then Nick was in the way, and he went, he went like this. And I thought, put your arms down, so I could go around you. But he, he didn't mean to. Um, but yeah, no, I've really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. How the hell do you have run you frame those meterage? Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's a hell of a, a hell of a stat. But, yeah, I, mean, how but the hell... I used to think that you know when I seen like fullbacks and like, they've made three hundred meters this game. I'm like, no, they haven't. No, they haven't. They've caught the ball in the backfield and ran fifty yeah. five times. Yeah. Right. Um, so I got that a uh, bit of praise, but it was yeah, but don't, don't, yeah, but don't let the truth get away from yeah, the story. Yeah, that's yeah, all yeah, I yeah, spice that up. Yeah, I made hundred eighty two free contact. Yeah, because contacts, well, so. you were eating up the distance until they caught yeah. up with you. So yeah, exactly. yeah, I guess. Yeah, I but guess. you did make some. Like, you did actually. No, get I, I made. I made a fair few meters, but meters through contact would have been significantly lower. Than yeah. the ones <laughs> yeah. the, oh, no, that's the what the point of statistics yeah. Yeah. Exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I had to give Haska a statistics lesson the day after. Yeah, because because I was yeah I was talking up certain things and he went. Talking shit, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and actually, Cavi had to it by going. By the way, guys, I'm usually you, good by yeah. I might be talking absolute bollocks, and Tins is like, "Yeah, you're." you're. I was like, okay, sorry about that. You were really upset by that, actually. You wouldn't, you wouldn't let go of it. Yeah, because I couldn't, because I couldn't yeah, get my head around the yeah. fact that I thought, for example, having watched the game from the stand, and this this backs up my point about the fact that no one knows what they're talking about when they're in the stand, was that I thought we hadn't necessarily got over the gain line as many times as we should have done because I felt that they were um, they were hitting us behind the gain line and we were getting pressured. But actually, the stats, according to Mike, said we got more gain line busts than them. Yeah, made, probably did. Made, like, made more meters, more more carries, more dominant carries. Yeah, but we, if we you probably just, carried more than them, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. But if yeah. you were saying to say that dominant carries getting over the gain line, when actually I saw people getting hit, and then suddenly we were under pressure, and run out of ideas, or run out of shape, yeah. for example, and then and then I was proved completely wrong, and then everyone, and then it just goes to show that anyone in the stand, including the guys in the media. <laughs> Not know what they're talking about. <laughs> they probably felt that way because we gave a, a lot of like continuous penalties away. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. and it just put so much pressure on us yeah. and gave them so much field position. I think penalties five five hundred eighty eight meters to three hundred and five. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. And you just you, you guess that that was an observation. That's why I say it's so mm. dangerous. Unless you know what you're talking about, don't talk. Seventy four game pod. line carries to their forty three. There wow. you go. 
How do you reflect? A lot of people have a lot to say, but from those within the camp, does it feel like it's coming? Is it slower than you wanted? Is well, it... we were in this position in 2018 before the 2019 World Cup. We had our worst ever Six Nations finish fifth, didn't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. Lost like seven games in a row or something. I can't remember how many we lost, but we lost a lot of games in a row. Um, and we finished in the final. So, um, And Ireland were the same. They had their best run. And then obviously didn't go to win the World Cup. So I think... I'm not saying those boys are going to bomb out the World Cup. I'm just saying, like, it's not necessarily about peaking now. It's about peaking at the right time. I think France are on fire. I actually thought they'd drop off, but they haven't. They've they've maintained it. They've been brilliant. Um, but I think for us as an England team, um, it's just about peaking at the right time. And I think Eddie's had enough World Cup campaigns now to know that. So when everyone's obviously giving him a load of flack from the outside, I, I don't think it's bothering him too much is it just a little bit uh, would you I, don't know, I, I said the only thing that really was missing is what you had in the autumn was you were a bit sharper a bit more clinical in attack I just felt well, was, I that, think was we, that brought we, we, up we were playing terms? a brand new system in the autumn um, and it was more, uh, it, it, we were actually way better at it in training this time around um, I think the teams that we played in the autumn that system was probably Maybe a lot suited more suited better. yeah I think they D up very differently in Six Nations especially when they play England everyone wants to beat us so. yeah. whereas in the autumns I'm not saying teams don't want to win but they you're not playing as regularly that yeah. not as, they don't know us as well do they so um, yeah I'd probably say that uh, have you read any of the stuff around Eddie or not yeah I've seen a few things but asked a few questions what, what do you make of it oh, obviously people think I'm going to defend him regardless but I think it's ridiculous some of the stuff that I've seen is mental what, one of the things it's, it's because he doesn't play the game that they go after him and Stephen Jones at the moment who you know I've always gotten very well with is doing a Jones versus Jones thing and he said Jones well, versus Jones are they yeah. boxing are they <laughs> well it's quite funny actually to see what happened um, and they did some article and it was something like uh, you know his win representatives between 2016 and 17 was something like 70 or 80 percent and since then it's been down to 50 or 60 percent or something like that it's not it's not as good but I don't I just I mean if you ask the players it's what I don't understand uh, no no player is going to stand I would not put the pressure on you on this podcast to say to nail your colors completely to the mask but what I'm suspecting what so I've what, heard what's that nail the colors to your mask so I basically say that Eddie Jones is the best thing since sliced bread because you're not going to say shit I'm not forcing you to say something you don't yeah, want to say yeah I want to force you to say <clears> something well I'd, I'd tell you I'd that, tell you if I did that's what I, th- I, I think he I th- knows that and I think everyone else knows but, that but, but like, also I, I just don't think it's the case I, I believe that not, if you ask 90% of the players in the squad whether he was the right man for the job they would say yes yeah, but like you'd have to ask him, wouldn't you? And that's the thing. You no, don't but you, get... but you as a like, you must yeah. pick it up. You, well, you know, get like, there's always f- people who hate him. You so... get that. F- you know what? In like 2020, in 2020, and that it probably did feel a bit of like because we we're playing so badly. But it was yeah. it was us. It was us that was playing badly. You know, it wasn't it wasn't him. He's not out there. And like we had a game plan, we all buy into him. We just didn't execute it very well. But that wasn't the case. This Six Nations, obviously, we had the the red. Scotland game, I don't know what went wrong. We just they were just really good on that day, you know. Um, but you did have the crazy. It didn't help with the crazy swinging momentum. Just with, you had a you had a thing that you had it where you wanted it. You had it. You were in control, complete control. And this is what I say: if you go back to those games, that split second red card against. Ireland yeah, be a well, completely that's why different Test game. match rugby is so popular, mate, because and then, and one the, thing like that the, changes the whole dynamic. The, the, the yellow card in the Scotland game. When oh, you're yeah, so sorry, com- I forgot about yeah, that. With yeah, when you're so comfortable. Yeah, those two things don't happen now. Obviously, they did happen. Well, they're anomalies, so, though, aren't they? Yeah, they're, like, they're a complete anomaly. They don't happen. No way, you, well, I would say pretty confidently you wouldn't lose that Scotland game. And then you, you don't, because it's happened so early in the Ireland game, you don't know what would have happened. I think it's just, it is the frustration that Eddie can produce by the way that he deflects things around the media. That's and what the, you want though, mate, yeah, as a player. Well, exactly. But and, also as a fan, you want then, people who write, who write headlines for you and who get you engaged do, and get I you do, talking about it and get the, you thinking and watching. I do course. think he's probably the most divisive coach on how fans feel about him. Yeah. Well, because, the like, me. as in love or hate, yeah, Mar- right. Mar- Marmite. I know, I know a little bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if but, they win in Australia, everyone's straight back in his. Well, again. exactly, and and that's that's the thing that we always talk about. So if you still look at his his rate, obviously everyone was raving about the performance the boys put in against South Africa and the way that they found a way to win and come back from a difficult situation, and everything was hailing all was great again. And then you're just talking about we've just talked about two moments that could yeah. have completely swung for it being a Grand Slam game. 
Yeah. And you lose, you know, you're losing a Grand Slam game to arguably a team that's on fire right now. Oh, and, that's what sports uh, like. Right? Yeah, that's but, what sports like. but then it's, it, why is it, does it need to take over the front of, but the back pages but, of a paper? It, it's amazing. So I haven't, until this had conversation, given one thought about it since we did the thing in France. I'm right? not, you know, like, I, I want boys to do well. We're not replaying international rugby at the moment. But if you still look at the papers, like I flick through because people tag me and stuff. And they're still just going out, you know. Po- I saw some Chris Jones, I, I really like from the, the Evening Standard, you know, posting, Where are they now? Stuart Lancaster and I, the Nanny Farrell in thing, Mike Cat, Graham Roundtree about to be head of Munster. You know, if and people underneath go, If we had that, we'd, we'd, we'd win the World Cup. <laughs> it's like you had them, yeah, and they didn't win the World yeah. Cup. So, what you oh, but they've all learned now, so get them back in. Genuinely. Oh, well, I mean, they probably have learned, they've probably learned loads. They have probably learned loads, but, again, but they, they weren't bad in. people to, they weren't yeah. bad to start yeah. with. They just didn't if you go right back to start. the, they go back to the articles you were writing when they were. <laughs> In, that's what I mean. They probably weren't and, very good people, and were they? Like, and they'll turn around and say, and what the journalist will say was, well, if it wasn't for us, they wouldn't have gone on a journey and learned. And, they went, and you know, Stuart Lancaster wouldn't have become one of the Leinster's favourite ever coaches. And Graham Ramsey wouldn't be head of Munster. And Andy Farrell wouldn't be in charge. And Mike Cat wouldn't have had it. We built them, and now we deserve to have them back until they fuck up again. That's and then you said. Someone yeah. said that. Someone said that. Yeah. People are saying people are saying that kind of stuff. I mean, you got, you know. Um, I mean, I always hammer every week with Clive Woodward, sort of the general demeanour about that. You know, if I was in charge, this was like what I would do. And, you know, and I've said this and we need to... It, he hasn't been in charge of your sport team since 2004. But yeah, and, and the best really? thing is, you know, Eddie five, Jones... Five. Is, five. Eddie what Jones is someone... He just huh? talks about rugby. He just commentates. He, he? Right, okay, bear in mind. No, he used to, he was coach. When we no, I know, I know yeah, he won the World Cup. Yeah, but no, I'm, I'm he, went, he, went he, fo- he went to He went to football for a Did bit. He? And uh, to try and ma- manage, uh, yeah. uh, not manage, but uh, basically head of performance. performance. Uh, I'd like to see some football coaches come in and have a crack at rugby. Who would you like to be coached by in football? Um, yeah, I okay. met Arteta the other week. I'd like to. Did you? Yeah, he wouldn't be coached by Really, really good. How did you meet him? He came in, done a talk. Did he? England, yeah, it was brilliant. Was he good? Yeah, I met Tony oh, Pulis gash, uh, through Steve. That was brilliant. Uh, I've met I've met loads and they're all real, I'd want they're all real good clock. characters. Either one. I saw that, they I speak saw that, well. <laughs> yes. I saw that Arteta Neil... was very impressive. Was I thought, like, isn't that Arsenal rubbish? No, the fourth, aren't they? Are they? I'd like to see a established football coach, I don't know, Mourinho, he's not going to come for what the wages would be in rugby, but I'd like to see someone like that come into rugby and be given, because obviously we're, I don't know, we're reasonably polite. I don't know, what is it? That is a really We're, we're easy to coach. Respectful, we're yeah. very easy to coach. Yeah, we're very, very coachable. coachable. Whereas footballers, all you hear is like, so talented, but they just don't. But that is but such an interesting point. Imagine, I'd love to see what they could do. I imagine coming from an elite sport, so an actual professional sport. Rugby's been professional for a while. We don't say it's a professional, it should be. That level of, of, of competency, mm. professionalism, and actually all the ideas they've got, delivering it to an audience is actually that interesting. Actually, it's interesting. That, it goes, that okay, of, I'll go do that. And none of them are just going to walk so, off if so you said this shit. <laughs> No one's going to go, oh, I'm going to speak to my agent, move club halfway through, or have discussions <laughs> in the media. I mean. do, that is, I've never thought about that. No, that might actually be the best. But, but, then, but they've got but to understand the game. Yeah. We don't understand but, the game. No, but... The, got enough problems if, with if, kicking if the, as it is. If the, <laughs> as long as he's got the coaches underneath him, if he can manage the players. There's that, yeah, some good assistant coaches. But at the same time, like they... Because obviously they learn so much about football and they love the sport. If they were putting all their eggs into it, they're such good coaches because they learn about how... Rugby should be played. They probably find a new way to coach it and a new way to play it. Yeah. I always think with the NFL stuff, like uh, I see, like they run all the routes, the routes, 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 yeah, routes. routes, and they run all the routes and stuff, and the off work, uh, footwork off the ball, and, that. and I think I don't know why we never do it in rugby. You know, like I think it was um, who's the one at Wasps Centre thirteen uh, played for New Zealand came over as a Fekata. Malachi Fekata. Yeah. Like, I remember watching him once, and he like ran at the line, and then done like a jump step before he got the ball, and went boom, and then went straight for fingers against Leicester actually. And I thought, geez, like how do you defend that? Like he's stepped already without the ball in his hand, and yeah. like no one knows where he's going to go. And then boom, they must have put the ball on a plate yeah. for him because he's been doing that and training all week and went well, through. Well, that's what Danny Cipriani used to try to do yeah. with with uh, the players. Put the talk. ball where you're going to go yeah, through as opposed to Yeah, but also talk you. about, and it, actually Sam Burgess, to tell you what was really interesting about rugby league stuff, was like doing some defence against Sam. And, you know, the ability for A, for them to hide out of your, your view, Vision. but also for them to change on the ball, so yeah. they try to make it. We never That's do. That's what anyway. I've been trying to do yeah. lately. It's yeah, well, yeah, it's hard you, to catch. well, actually, never no, know. But my, um, <laughs> Steve Walter did a lot of that. That's why Courtney. You look at the way Courtney played before, before that lion saw. He was just hitting his kind of straps. But actually, on that lion saw, he spent a load of time working on the post, 
moving last Saving. minute of the ball, and now you see he's become yeah. such a good stepper. His first few <laughs> times, you like you spaff it every single yeah. time, and it's like boom, yeah. boom, boom, trying to catch it when you're moving. Yeah, yeah. But, but if you, when you get into the rhythm, and if you've got like a nine or a ten who can read you, yeah, like forty of me at the moment are working on it a lot in training. As in training, is going well. You don't what, get as many opportunities in the game, obviously. But. I will say, Sippy, for for all of these things, one of the things he always hammered was that attention to detail the expectation of how your body shape should look at the line, where he wanted to put the ball. And if you had a 10 that can actually play those skills, it, it's impossible to defend, well, to I mean, make I, a decision. Yeah, there's no doubt in Sips was orchestrating a pass like that. He's yeah. one of the best to ever do it. Yeah. I think that was my final question on England. Is there a sort of a bigger plan? I mean, it's interesting you say you're changing systems in November. Yeah, get and obviously Lancaster and the guys Not back. so much that, but in terms of, do you feel you are on a journey to something that, Paying punters aren't necessarily seeing the whole of at the moment. Yeah, was to that? win the World Cup. Love it. Will you retire after winning the World Cup and go on an open top bus tour around uh, Bristol? I don't know Bristol about retire, but I, I, I wouldn't mind like exploring other things. Like? But it sounds a bit France. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'd like to maybe, if possible, go on the Lions tour before that. But... Um, I, I don't know. Like, I'd like the, when you done the Bellator stuff, I'd well, really like to have really a, did it, did it? I know, but you were 36 and had dust coming out of your pecs. So I'd <laughs> yeah. like to, but I'd be 29, <laughs> yeah. 29 turning 30 then. So I'd like to give that a crack. Have you um, Have you genuinely got the hunger? Yeah. He's always had hunger. He's been talking about it since I started. He wanted to come down. And... Oh, I'd love, uh, I love it. And you um, find out you got a glass jewel. Be... <laughs> oh, I've got a fucking granite. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I've got. I'm not, I'm not is there, is is there, is there room on the uh, is there room on the War, war of Wandsworth card? Do you want a little go way? next Thursday? What about, old, what about your old <laughs> feather mitt? You gonna be right with that? <laughs> well, that's the thing. I, I can't beat anyone up. But I can't get knocked out. Go free round. Yeah, that is. That is. Yeah. No. What's you get? That is. Your Homer. Yeah. Homer. Just beat him. Just beat him. Kills me. It's so tired. The champ's really tired. Yeah. I'd like to do that. Um. I wouldn't mind. I don't know. Like giving the NRL a crack at one stage, maybe. Strong. Over to Australia, I'd like yeah. to give league a crack. Only because like I've been seeing, I don't know, Sonny Bill did it with the boxing and stuff. Quay Cooper did it, and all these other boys. I've seen one of the Aussie league boys, um, that Bam Bam Tuivasa. Have you yeah. seen him? The UFC boy. Yeah. He was playing NRL until twenty, I think it was, and then made the switch. But he was like a hero in the age grades. Um, and it's ain't me saying I'm gonna do it. These are just things that I've thought about. I'd love to give him a crack. What I don't about think movies. Films, yeah, I, ain't, I ain't good luck enough for that. I yeah. think you are. I think you know, that the time you posted that picture of you and the budgie smugglers looked like who is it you look like? You know as well. <laughs> Bag of sick. No, no. <laughs> You're like, uh, you look, I mean, a bit like sexy beast Ray Winston from no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Oh, You're what the... a film. What, oh, a, what film. a film. Sexy beast. What, what a film. film. Yeah. No, I think no, that was no, 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 no. Have you seen that? Mate, sexy beast. Lol, every bus journey away game, you just be like, Right, they've got a sexy beast. Like, no, we've seen it every <laughs> other week. Put it on. It's Everyone's amazing. loving it. Everyone's loving it. Yeah. No, no, no. Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley and, and Ray, um, Winston. Ray, Ray Winston. Ray Winston. you got to watch that, Tins. Oh, Brilliant right. film. Genius. Yeah, um, no, you look really, you wore the Cobra Budgie Smugglers and you look a million dollars. You looked fantastic. And I thought maybe you got a bit of a model y sort of. Maybe. Hired gangster, hired man, you know, dorman so, number three. I'd like to, yeah, whatever. I'd Vinnie like Jones can do it. Yeah. I've got, oh, I did, got an A at school for drama. Did you? Yeah. yeah. What did you do? Did Ugly Stepsister in Cinderella, <laughs> which was one because she said, look, you've done all these other roles which are real natural to you. I need to see if you can do something else. And I did it. I got a B for that, though. Right. Um, and then I got an A for one called School or something. Um, and then there was one more. But we had to do our own play then. Uh, but yeah, I got an A. You know, I've always wanted the to do The written let me down. I got a B in the written and an A star in the <laughs> I think so. you and I should do pantomime I don't, well, I don't like panto mate do you not I was behind he's behind you, you. No, no, he ain't. No, he ain't. <laughs> no he ain't no he ain't no, you he ain't fooling me yeah. Bab. what about the um, the drink we came up with uh, rhubarb on, on it <laughs> rhubarb on, on it <laughs> rhubarb on, on it instead of rhubarb I said do you, do you like gin because we love our gin on this show and he, and he went here he ain't got, if he ain't got rhubarb, rhubarb I'm not interested so we got, he went rhubarb Right is the name, and then we change it, rhubarb and tonic, rhubarb and on it. If it a company wants to launch well, a rhubarb and on it, I'll take, well, you'll take 5% for the idea, I'll well. take 5% because I'm your mate, and we'll go from there. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll work on it, it. We'll, we'll work, work on, on it. it. Best role in a school play you ever had? I was nu uh, Knuckles <laughs> of course in Bugsy Malone. Were you? Yeah. Oh, what a play. Yeah, <laughs> straight play that. You? I was, um, oh, you know, Pygmalion. Uh, I was I Elijah's um, father. A solder, solder off for the elocution, the elocution lesson. I don't know Pygmalion. You don't know it? 
No, it's basically it's basically a girl that talks. Oh, actually, yeah, a London version of you <laughs> talks. Oh, right, Gavda, and these two people basically think that they can um, teach the rain and proper Spain, English yeah. and, and, and make up the past as a as a thing. And I'm a dirty old dad who just sells sells you know, sells her off. Um, and then I played I played someone in some utopian thing, and I think I was like, "What?" Uh, I was I was going to say, "What Shakespeare play?" Have you, did you? No, do I it, was Ethan? the wa- I was the washerwoman in Wind in the Willows. Really? <laughs> Almost fell down the stairs carrying my washing. That was the end of it. I was the demon headmaster oh, no. in one thing. Um, I can't remember what that was. My brother was the artful dodger in all the twist and pick a pocket or two. Yeah, and oh. then on the in one of the live shows where Bill Sykes gives. Thingy a backhander, he actually gave him a backhander and like knocked the bloke out <laughs> on the floor. Really? Where that team's gone bad. Yeah. Where that gone bad. Um, we are running out of time. Can we have a quick cheer, please, for the Red Roses? Yes. 23 and 0. Scar scoring more tries for fun. France coming up three from three as well. Well done, Ireland, who got their first win in the Six Nations. Uh, they're into fourth Italy bottom at the moment. Simon Middleton's team are. Something else. Do you have anything to do? Do you have a cross paths swap? Yeah, I've seen them not long ago. Um, in Chelsea. Um, oh, we you? had that fallow week, yeah. Uh, we had a commercial thing together with a few of them. Did you? Catch up, yeah. I think there's a lot of, um, obviously, same sport, but it was very different, isn't it? Yeah. The areas of the game that they focus on compared to where we <clears throat> probably put all of our emphasis into set piece and, and strike plays and stuff. They're very much so on... It's just different games, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but no, we yeah we, we 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 talk when we see them, but like no, there's not much crossover in terms of like we don't do much together. No, we don't do much together now. I said that's one thing you should have changed. Should, I think. Yeah. Do you think stuff. that should change? Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. even just tr- some training stuff or what's a bit. Because they're based now. up at Mar- they're Marlow, aren't they? No, but where are they? Where do they base their? I, I thought they were at Lensbury. Yeah, I thought they were at Lensbury. Or Bisham Abbey. Bisham, Bisham Abbey. They've done some that's stuff. Like they were yeah. at the England football thing the other week. What's that called? Where, St. George's. Yeah, oh, St. That, George's. Yeah. They were there. But yeah, they should do a bit more. I went into the England under-21s. They lost after I came in for a chat. <laughs> Football. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Rugby. England oh, 20s. Yeah, England 20s. Oh, 20s, sorry, fuck. Whatever they were. That probably helps. So, <laughs> that was I knew I was Wonder talking to. I went and talked to a bunch of lads. I think they were England under-20s. They could have just been a group of teenagers. Yeah, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah I, I've set them back for like 10 years, unfortunately. Um, you're doing good scans this week, actually. There was a brilliant yeah. episode last week with Elmer Mo Hunt. And scares live yeah. from the um, from the team hotel. So if you haven't listened to that, it was very very funny. A lot of carnage going on. France England Grand Slam showdown. Is uh, it for the Grand Slam? Well, well, well there's, there's, there's one to go, but I can't see got, anyway that they've still got Ireland. They got Ireland, but Ireland aren't, aren't really there the, They're compared coming to. Coming up, but not yeah, there yet. they haven't got their professional contracts in place or anything like that at the moment. So I can't see them being stumbled up. Then it will be. Uh, England playing Ireland. In, yeah, England play Ireland next. It followed the same <clears throat> schedule as, us, the, as yeah. the men. Uh, so that, but then they're in Bayonne to play France. Um, fif- maybe fifteen thousand. They're talking about. Yeah, nice. Like they Brilliant got a big crowd. turnout. Yeah, there. they did. Oh, yeah, record, it was a record crowd at King's Home. So look, everything's going in the right direction. Obviously, the, the girls are running different. Like, I mean, he's managed to. He's in a great place where Middleton can change the team quite consistently. Yeah. He's played three different nines. He's, you know, he's, he's been able to put Scouts on the bench for one game. He'll probably change it again. She threw a mental pass when she came on this week, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. Was she on the bench this week? Yes. Yeah, yeah. she no. threw a mental pass of her left hand. Have you seen it? No. Fair play to her. And they've yeah, scored 31 play. tries in three games. <laughs> really? Yeah. Van in the sun. Yeah. Does that not show you, though, the, yeah, the, dif- yeah. the difference in levels and competition with... Yeah, I I'm, think, not, I'm not taking anything away from 23 and 0. That's incredible. What an achievement. Yeah. Well, they, what clearly, it says is you've got to get the other teams professional they need to be as quickly yeah, as you can. Exactly. England exactly. are setting the benchmark. You yeah. can't you can't beat them for that. Yeah. I'm sure the girls don't even really enjoy that. Yeah. I'm sure yeah, they, they want a bit of competition. Yeah. I I, I agree. Yeah. But they 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 have they are see, but the good thing is about what the girls do is they they support the other even cuz the nations. other girls all play in in the Allianz Premier 15, so they're, they're all their friends and they all sort of support them. But they see, you know, with what Wales have done in having those few, few perfect, they've got 12 contracts, 11 retainers, it makes a difference. And uh, But we need everyone needs to get on board with it, don't they? How do you do that? It's cash in it, Bab. Uh, look, I think it's, it's a responsibility of the unions. I don't think there's any reason that Ireland can't do it with the way that they, agree, their yeah. structure is. Um, obviously, Scotland is not, as cash rich uh, in in their player group pool, so it might be trickier. But there's got to be supporters out there. Who I don't want, know. I think they're serious about it, yeah. and they should. Otherwise, I don't think it's fair. Well, no, I agree. 
we look at fourteen thousand at um, the crowd this weekend. Record in record amount of crowd. People are coming most before. You know, if you talk to Skaz and some of the other girls on the on the shows, you know, the idea of getting more than a thousand at some point, yeah, so yeah. having anyone tune in was was a pipe dream. <clears throat> so the, the evolution is 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 um, it's getting there. Isn't it? Getting there. Yeah. For fourteen thousand people, I think the more you know. As I, as I said, I think when you look at the crowd and you see Skaz standing there taking a photograph with a girl who's now has got an aspirational person to see someone, that, one of her heroes playing in front of 14,000 people on a 23 winning streak, playing some great rugby, just shows where things can go. And I think, unfortunately, it's always about money. But until you start building profiles, yeah. encouraging companies to come in, you know, create a spectacle that people want to watch, you know, um, up the, the, the health, the fitness and conditioning, up the you know the the strength conditioning etc and all the rest but of you it do that with, with professional yeah, contracts exactly. Don't you? exactly yeah um right before we move on obviously can we get an update on nine days to go oh, no yeah. just before we do that get well abby dow who's uh, broken her yeah. and I've good luck that. scars who's going to out for a hundredth cap next time she takes well, the field so well done class, to our girl. Yeah, it's mega. um just before we do that as well i also very quickly just wanted I mean, the desperately sad news around mm. tom smith yeah and we chatted to him a, f- a couple of years ago i mean just about the most inspiring interview we've done, funnily enough, with a guy who sort of achieved so much in the game without necessarily ever having a huge number of headlines written about him, but the outpouring of love and respect and just some extraordinary stories that have come out, some really, really lovely lines, just very, very simple from uh, Surya McGeekin, who said, in Tom Smith, not only has rugby lost one of its finest players, but also one of its greatest men. Pound for pound, there was no one tougher than Smith. He must rank as Scotland's greatest prop of the professional era if not all time. Jim Telfer, Tom was exceptional. My kind of player, no fear, no bother. Keith Wood, he was magnificent. Martin Johnson, hell of a player. That's sort of all you need to know, really. When we interviewed him, it was extraordinarily uplifting for a man in the situation that he was. But, it, you know, often it, it's, it's awful to sort of hear the things after the moment has passed, and, and he has passed. But, it, I mean, just... It's, it's hard to know really what the question is other than just an amazing man, an amazing player. Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, first of all, an incredible player and what he did. He always did it with such kind of style and aplomb was incredible. He's so quiet and so unassuming. That's what everyone always says about him, but he was an incredible kind of um, team man. And actually, when you're faced with that challenge that he, he had, and we obviously talked to him about it and kind of his situation and how hard he tried and was continuously fighting against an awful disease that takes people you know, all the time. Um, it, yeah, it was kind of really inspirational. It was, and it was actually quite sad for me because I'd, obviously, that 97 Lions and all the kind of stuff that had gone with it and watching him play, I'd always kind of wanted to get to know him, meet him. I'd never really had that opportunity. And I, I got put into like a Saints, um, a Saints, former Saints players group. And obviously everyone was kind of an outpouring, you know, used to be his teammates in there. It was really interesting. I saw... Um, you know, I saw I read this article that someone put in, I don't know where it's come from, but it said Tom, Tom Smith was way too small to do what he did. He was five foot ten and sixteen stone, which by the standards of inter- international rugby props is somewhere between diminutive and Lillipu- Lilliputian. <laughs> Putting him in the Scotland side to face England in nineteen ninety seven was a surprise to many. Taking him to South Africa with the Lions that summer was a bona fide shock. South Africa is the land of the scrum, a vast Africana farmers who test their manhood by tackling wildebeest at full pelt. Half pint Scottish props would be breakfast, lunch and dinner for these guys, except no one told Tom that. In a world of bravado and tough talk, his waters ran silent and deep. One of the first things the Lions did, even before leaving the UK, was a team building course. And with one of the disciplines was to see how many crates you could stand on before falling off. Each man was roped, roped and harnessed for safety and they had to build the stack beneath them as it, as it rose higher and higher. Some of these big, hard rugby players couldn't make it beyond half a dozen. Tom managed 35. He didn't say, <laughs> he didn't say a word. He just did it. He went to South Africa, affected as a backup for Jason Leonard. No one picking the line side before they left Heathrow would have given Tom the chance of the starting 15. Even the captain, Martin Johnson, said, I didn't know him from a hole in the head from the tour. But before the tour, but the coaches Ian McGeek and Jim Telfer promised that everyone will be considered on form rather than reputation. And they were as good as they were. Tom was playing better than anyone else in his position. So he got the nod for the first test. And Leonard, who understood the Lions ethos perfectly, did all he could to help Tom prepare. And if that doesn't kind of tell you about the bloke and yeah. the story and the way he was, and like there's some amazing stories. I think Jason Leonard talks about sharing rooms with him and like wake up and Tom Smith staring at him. It's like worst, a, worst sleepwalker ever. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. Like a serial killer, like waking up over him and just but that that character, and I think it's it 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 summed up in that interview. Like he's a fighter, he's got an amazing family, he tried his best, and unfortunately, the, this horrible disease that takes so many took him, but he's a hero of the game, and it's it's a real shame. You know, again, it, it always these moments makes you value what you have 
at 50 or 52, whatever it was, how precious life is, you've got to live it to the full, you've got to appreciate this moment, you have to stop sometimes to smell the grass, you have to tell someone that you love them, tell someone that you liked them, and tell someone that they did good, because you never know when it might be the last time you see them. Good on you. I hope you'll forgive us for doing this, but it was, as we've mentioned, our pleasure to speak to Tom at the RPA Awards in 2020. He spoke very candidly about his treatment for cancer, and we just wanted to pop some of this in to hopefully inspire and raise a smile. After the initial shock, you know, you have a choice, and uh, um, I tried to be positive, and uh, just, you know, the, the chemo was pretty brutal at the start, but they toned it down after uh, after about uh, March, February, March, they, they it calmed down a little bit. They took a few things off that were causing quite big side effects. So I, I started to get my life back. So Good. I've got three kids, so there's uh, that side of things as well. So you don't just uh, get to mope around and feel sorry for yourself. I was going to say, how, how good a distraction have they been? Yeah, it's been, it's been uh, obviously we did lockdown together. So uh, that was, uh, it was quite nice putting them to work. They're old enough to work now. So good. Got, uh, I was about to say, you're the, you're the only parent I can, I, I can recall actually saying they enjoyed lockdown with their kids. <laughs> Most people we talk to, like Jack Knoll, we interviewed for a podcast. He's got a gym at the bottom of the garden and his wife couldn't understand why he was working out for 12 hours a day. It's, well, it's, like, it's a, bit like, a bit like chemo. You look back and you don't remember it so badly it's like uh you know my you know my knees didn't hurt after games and my back wasn't too sore and you forget all the bad times and uh you know lockdown was actually it's actually probably the last chance the kids have gone off to the two older ones have gone off to uni so it was kind of our last chance to spend some time together it was nice it had, there were definitely moments have you had a bit of a, a reminisce on the career as well I mean, it was such a glorious career tom and you are you are one of scotland's greatest um and a lion too you know one of one of, one of the greats having been involved in 97 and 2001 have you had a chance to reflect on what you achieved in your boots i have to be honest you know i didn't win that much as a player I think, uh, well, I think yeah. your last Scottish um, Six Nations, oh, Five Nations champion as it was. I mean, that's, you know, I think most people north of the border would take that right now. Yeah, no, no, that, that, was, a, that was a good one. And it's a good one because nobody can, <laughs> nobody can uh, take that off us. It's given us more of a, a, an opportunity to kind of reflect on uh, the friendships that we have in rugby, catching up with old friends and old, old colleagues. And it was quite humbling that so many people, you know, came out for me and uh, it was just nice to see see such a you know these guys I've not seen for some of them you know 20 odd years you know the Geech made that speech in the in the 97s lines that you'll, you'll kind of you'll see each other it may be in 10 years or 20 years time but you'll you'll remember and it's very true you know maybe it, it occasionally takes uh takes events or situations like this to to make you appreciate it so that was Tom Smith speaking to us at the 2020 RPA Awards. And obviously at this very sad time, our thoughts go out to his family and his friends. We will be raising a glass to Tom Smith on our latest uh, British and Irish Lions stop in partnership with Vodafone. We are teeing up as part of their grassroots club's return to rugby because we know all too well how uh, difficult the last couple of years have been. And over the last six months on Vodafone's Lions Legacy Tour, we have visited Westbury, Dungannon and Bannockburn, and we've got one more to go. We're off to Aberdare in South Wales, which is a Canterbury Lions origin club, meaning it's bred a Lions player or two. We were actually meant to be going in January, and then COVID got in the way in February, and then Storm Eunice got in the way. So we are very pleased to finally be making the trip across the bridge on Saturday, the 23rd of April. On the day, we're going to be putting the Aberdeen Minis through their paces, running a few warm-ups and team talks, and there'll be a big old live show in the clubhouse in the evening. Some big names joining us to help on the day as well. It is all set to be a bumper day, and if you're in the area, in and around Aberdeen, uh, we would love to see you there. Vodafone are also going to be providing tech support and digital education uh, to Aberdeen as a club. Financial sustainability and to help with their online presence as well, which we all know is a real biggie, as we said after the last couple of fairly difficult years. And the cherry on top of all of this, thank you to Canterbury, who are going to provide kit for the club as well. Looking forward to our final stop on the 23rd of April. If you're in and around Aberdeen, we would love to see you there. and We will be raising a glass to the great Tom Smith as well. Nine days to go. Are you able to come next Thursday or not? I pinged you a note about it. My walk fight. fight night. Yeah, you may well be you may, may well be getting ready for Quinns, which is a slightly bigger deal. No, I can come, yeah. Uh, you'll get the juices flowing. Yeah, I'll come. For your UFC. Okay, I'll ping some details. Um, odds, scores on the doors. We've got tickets Why available. Why not? <laughs> 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 <Literally. laughs> You've missed him, haven't you? Yeah. I, ha- I love him so much. Like I just don't get to spend any time with him. But it feels like 
he's like a bit like an oyster. You have to but open the shell a bit and scrape away <laughs> to get back in there because he closes back up again. And suck him out. Yeah. <laughs> well, not, uh, not now with that, what you've been saving up. <laughs> Thursday, the 21st of April at Wandsworth Town Hall. It is the big fight between yours truly and Archie Curzon. I've actually been training quite hard, but I've tweaked my back and got a hairline fracture in my thumb. But that is no excuse. I it sounded like an excuse to me. The yeah, thumb yeah. ain't a problem. No. The back well, might be a problem. Yeah, the back's a bit of an issue. Sauna, steam. Uh, Load you, of tramadol. You can. Go out there and bash him. 30 quid tickets available, apparently. He's, he's still goading me, even nine days out. Pay no 30 gets you a £30 ticket at fixer.co if you'd like to come along. We've got some big names coming. You're going to do the auction. We've yep. got quite a lot of VIPs in the room as well. You three are going to be my walk-on girls. Yeah. Let's get into it. Three rounds, two minutes. Where's your money? Yeah. You went on his pod, didn't you? Yeah, he's begging me for ages. Right. He'll be begging me on Thursday. Finish <laughs> Just to finish him. <laughs> yeah. Kill me. Um, I seen he posted to you yesterday, didn't he? What did he say? Oh, Something about nonsense. nine days to put you to sleep. And yeah. you, you were, that was quite funny from you. What did What's he that? say? About, what did you say? I about? said, with your chat. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good. Never taken Alex. I honestly, Archie was like mortified that I'd say that. Alex is going to batter him. 100%. Are you much taller than him? You're quite tall. I'm a little yeah. bit taller. Yeah. Way I mean, taller. also, he's I'm got a, 42. He's I also mean. got, oh, shut up. You've got a vicious streak of mile wide behind that soppy git exterior. Relax. <laughs> a he's good get... big one always beats a good little one. Remember yeah. that. Do you think? Yeah. Bigger they are, the harder they nine fall. Nine times out of ten. My, ep- my walk on music is epic. I know, I've heard it. <laughs> what you got? It is epic. It's Can I reveal? You've got to wait for the night. Yeah. It's <laughs> I've done a little bit of mixing. Oh, I really want to know. Yeah, I'll play it to you afterwards. Any more for any more? Anything in the diary that's interesting? Uh, bit of tour PR. Days, get in, get on the shooting days. Getting on the shooting days. Yeah. We've got those going as well. Like shooting, we did a mega one at EJ Church. Got one in High Wycombe and at Honest for shooting. Goodbarrugby.com for details of that if you want to come play yeah. there. Uh, no, uh, what's on this week? Uh, no, uh, wife's competing down in Norfolk. So oh, is she? I'm DJ yeah, Friday night in Warwick. Are you? Ron Eastbar. Nice. Quite nice. Good luck. Is <laughs> sold out on Warwick. Saturday? You Saturday? Not yet, I don't think. But right. yeah, it will be. Good. It will be, yeah. Finish the job. Can I get a ticket one day? Can I watch it? Come whenever you want. Yeah. Can we? Can we come as a trio and sort of? Come whenever you want. Yeah. Can I get a shirt you... with Ellis on the back of it? Yeah. Again, Drew Ellis. Get well, again, Drew. Yeah. Up to you. Yeah. No. Come whenever you want. We should oh, do that. We should actually do that. Little day at the um, at Welford Road. What's it called? The Mat- Matoli Woods. I've got a certain I want to speak about. What about Benno's article and thing he's done? Oh, what's that? Have you seen that? No. no. He's made like a premier. I actually got invited to the premier. I can't yeah. go. Yeah. It's an, called, um, all or nothing, all basically, nothing. but. For Quinns, and it's like Ben Obano followed has. their champ the year they won the prem. I did not know that. I didn't yeah. know that either. Wait, is it out? It's, it's a premier. It's a premier. Week, I think I'll week. send. I'll forward you the thing, and I'll text Ben and see if you can get. It. Oh, he's, we'd love to have him still on. Playing? Was he retired? Ben, he's, he's, yeah. no, he's just resigned for Bath. He's just resigned. How's he doing all that? How's he getting um, filmed? Because he's done his knee, so he had loads of time. Oh, oh right. Because yeah. I wondered about that. But it's an Amazon one. Yeah, it's called. I did not know that. Something, something pressure. I, I literally got in, but I can't go to it. We're doing something. But um, There's another very good one that's come out called No Woman, No Try, yeah. which is on Amazon as well. Yeah. With Victoria yeah. Rush. What's the thing about... Um, Prep to win. Harlequins. Mm. On a and it's the story of their Prem winning season. Yeah. Oh my God, he, that is going he, to be he insane. Did, he didn't know they were going to win the Prem though. He followed them from the beginning, like when they... What yeah. does he do? How, what does actually Benno do in there? He's the... the Director or producer. producer he? Has he got has he got a good skills for it? Is he actually good he did, He's uh, brilliant, mate. Really? He's done one with me, yeah. He's yeah, brilliant. He I've watched that one. Yeah, he was brilliant. Really? Love yeah. that. He's just got a real good eye for it, like the art side of it. Right. Good Happy boy. Days. Is he related to Marrow? Have I yeah, made that up? They, are, cousin, they yeah. are cousins, aren't they? Um Prep to win. Out now? Out soon. I don't know, just Coming soon. Fair play, Ben I love that. I love that. Um, I love that opening up the World of rugby type of things like you see Maz yeah. in Miami with DJ Khaled. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Just so good for the sport. Yeah. Like. Do you know rugby? That's <laughs> class, mate. Um, we That's had. Class, um, Don't get corner. jealous. I am jealous. I won't he's, be jealous. He's at Warwick Student Union DJing on Tuesday night, yeah. opening up the game. I'm okay, <laughs> slipping up the floor. Of WKD. It's actually not <laughs> <laughs> zero cash and, and you know no future. I work with YouTube better <laughs> and the lovely <laughs> So Thank you very much for coming down. That's very nice to see you and Pleasure. just loving watching you work at the moment. Mega. We've been the Good, the Bad, and the Rugby. See you next week. This show is produced by Shara Kilgallen and D'Angelo. The Good, the Bad, and the Rugby is a folding pocket production. See you next week. <laughs>